If you're shopping for a Class B RV, if you're wanting to see what true innovation looks like in a Class B RV, you're gonna wanna stay tuned. Today, we have a playback best of live Q&A with Terry Minix, VP at Embassy RV. We got a whole lot to cover. Let's go. tuning in today. Really appreciate that. My name is Scott. I'm your host. Welcome to Go Small, Live Large. We are a YouTube channel dedicated to sharing the learnings from the road from my 2019 Winnebago Travado, a Class B RV that I've lived in full-time since February 2019. Dissatisfied with my status quo life, totally reinvented my life to really grab life by the horns and go on the road full-time in this small camper van. And we share that with you here, uh, the learnings of the places, the people, and the RV lifestyle, the RV rigs themselves. Really appreciate you tuning in today. I'm reading from my iPad. Um, this is the best of an hour long Q&A we had with Embassy RV VP Terry Minix talking uh, and answering your questions on that uh, live Q&A session. Um, today we're gonna cover um, the, the Sportsman, which is one of their uh, models based upon the Ford Transit. So you're gonna wanna stay tuned for that. Um, we talk about controlled custom, and this is one of the things that makes Embassy RV really unique in the Class B space. Um, they're not a high production um, RV builder. They're small batch, custom crafted, and in particular, custom controlled custom gets you some options you want that the other guys would never let you do. Um, the big guys anyway. Uh, we have a Lavio Drive Flush demo. Um, we talk about the hydronic hot water system. Uh, Terry explains that in it's great detail. Cool. We also are going to explain the water bladder system and this is truly unique uh, in the RV space uh, using ma marine grade yacht quality um, fresh and, and gray water tanks. So you'll want to stay tuned for that. We talk about shower wastewater. Ooh. And uh, he goes into some detail on the bed sizes. So let's get into it right now. And if you want to look at the uh, video uh, time points down below, you can skip to those various topics directly. And if you get something out of this, I sure would appreciate a thumb up. That really helps others find the channel. And let's get into it with Terry and the audience, Embassy RV. Um just give us a little bit of a tour of the sportsman. Some of these folks are may not be familiar with it. So one of the things I like about Embassy is that you have three floor plans, essentially, your choice of chassis. And this uh, sportsman is somewhat new to the lineup, right? And it's, uh, it's yeah. a little bit different. So maybe um, are you able to give a little bit of a tour of, of the rig? Rich is my tour guide. I All get right. to sit here and Rich is going to go around and show things. So um basically it's just a real open vehicle it does have the side venting system so we don't have any holes in the road um, and everyone has to know part of this design technique is if somebody didn't like the chest freezer and they wanted this cabinet to move forward and we add another cabinet and put the tall refrigerator in absolutely you know those are the things that we can do it doesn't bother a thing so everything just shifts forward and we add another cabinet in the middle of the coach and put the big refrigerator in with the drawer freezer so that's the things you have to understand about these models is they're not locked in to just this. I'm willing to make adjustments because it really doesn't hurt us, you know? So there's, there's versatility to everything we do. Greg's unit, we took away the wardrobe cabinet and we're putting his electric uh, fat tire bike in the back for him. So those things can be done, but we can still make clothes hang on the back of the wall there and, and still get the job done. So those are the kind of things that, you know, when somebody has a, a need, you know, we try to meet it. Uh, Jerry, just give us a little little talk there about the Lavio toilet. We've talked about this in the past. Uh, we've done some demos of this. Um, tell us about dry flush, why you like it. Um, the Lavio dry flush, everyone that we're switching to with that is loving it. I don't have any complaints at all out there on it. It really does a beautiful job. So when Rich is looking at it here, yep. so, so Rich, I mean, we're seeing your image. So this is perfect. It's just the coolest thing. When you go to change it, there's a garbage bag underneath. This will twist as it's doing, and this will be a little thicker. But you just take the garbage bag, you pull it over it, and throw it in the trash, put another garbage bag. This has an octagon. 
So the octagon just matches up in the octagon motorized part that sits here. There's two little notches right here. I always put them back. The lid goes back down and you're done. Um, Terry, so you had mentioned there's um, you have some water tanks and, and uh, water heater. Can you go into yeah. that for us? Uh, there's yeah. a gentleman They're here. Part's getting ready to go in Greg's unit, actually. So he'll be happy to see all this. And, and Mark's asking what the size of the fresh and gray water tanks are. So let's uh, address those as well. Most people don't understand how the water heater works with the hydronic system. So this is one of the water heaters. Basically, the water heater normally, this is the working end of it when you have LP. They have to cut a hole in the van and put a door in this, and this would bust through the outside of the vehicle. We don't use the LP part of it. We use the electric element. When you're plugged into a cord, it's just kind of hidden down here. So we get to turn this backwards and put that side to the inside. And this is to the wall. This is where we hook up the electric. This is where the hydronic goes. So basically antifreeze lines connect to these two pipes and they pump through the engine and they pump through our hydronic. And these are wrapped around the core of the tank and it just keeps the water hot all the time. And then these are the fresh water lines that cold in and the hot out. So everything's done on the back of this and it sets underneath the end tables right behind the driver's seat so you don't even see it. And then the water tanks are located next to it. So this is the gray tank and this is the fresh tank. So all the plumbing runs right along the wall and it's all run just slightly downhill. There's no dips or anything in it. It's really clean. And this is how the water is set up underneath the bed system. So it gives you a good idea of what they look like and then they just pump up when they get more in it, they just puff up when the water gets in it. And when it's empty, it goes down like that. And it doesn't need any venting because there's no air needed to move the water around. It, it flexes with it so you don't need to displace the air that would be in a normal tank. And Terry, what are the capacities of those? What's the capacity on the tanks, Terry? The tanks are 23 and a half gallon each. We do have some customers, again, we're gonna stretch the rules a little bit, that wanna make both of those fresh water. So that's 47 gallons with another six gallons here. Uh, that would be an incredible amount of water in a class B RV. And then the capture system underneath would be the only way we capture the gray water, which will hold about 10 gallons in that. And then you'll have to drain it a little more often, but. You know, normally when you stop and get where you're going, you can leave that hose out and just drain it all the time until you're ready to go away. And then you can carry all of this as fresh water. The Hydronic is a gasoline fired heater that mounts underneath the vehicle. It has a pump involved in it. So when it goes from 165 degrees to 185 degrees, the pump kicks on when it hits 165 and it, everything just keeps flowing through the heater or the engine block. It doesn't go through the radiator, but the engine block, the hydronic, the air heater, and the water heater, there's antifreeze going in a circle all the time. And when the flame needs to light, it just lights up and keeps it at that temperature between 165 and 185. So it's, it's just a gasoline heater heating antifreeze and pumping it in a circle and keeping everything working. It uses a gallon of fuel in 20 hours and less than one amp of DC power to run itself when it's fired up. And it is the fuel of the vehicle. Hey, okay, Mark, do you want to come off mute and ask that? Those are pretty good questions. Love to say, give an opportunity to say hi to Terry as well. Hi. Yeah, I'm just curious. You talk about the, uh, I don't understand the um, capture system for the shower and um, how big of a gray tank do you really need? If, I'm mostly interested in just a shower um, and having water for that and then how to get rid of that the most efficient way to, so I can carry the most fresh water. Do you want to go out and show them where we drain the water in the outside with the tablet? We can't, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we'll, we'll go out. We're going to pull the gray tank drain out of this and show you how it works. There's literally no valves under the vehicle. The only thing I ever had a problem with through the years is those pull valves that are on RVs that you have to pull to dump your gray or black water. They would stick from time to time from the road salt and all the stuff going on. 
So I eliminated that all the valves are above floor. There's nothing below floor that can get gummed up and stick and not function. And it also makes it a better four season vehicle because we don't have to worry about freezing below the floor. The water's all above floor. It, anything that drains out doesn't matter below the floor to drain them. So we're gonna go outside and show you the drain system coming out of the vehicle. Well, basically we've hidden a pipe under the vehicle. And you just lay this hose on the ground, it's got a cap on it, you stick it in the RV drain or it's just soapy water. You fertilize the grass and water the grass with it a little bit. But it's the coolest thing because it stows away and you can't even tell it's under there. But it's long enough to get away from the vehicle and drain it. You can have a little hose to hook on and go further if you want. But this stows right in a little system right underneath the vehicle. And it's just... And how does it know to go to the um, the capture system versus going to your gray water tank? Well, the sink water goes to the gray water tank. The shower water goes to the capture system underneath the vehicle, but they both meet up under the vehicle and go out of that hose. So above floor, you have a valve you have to open for the gray water tank under the sink. And when you open that, that gray water tank now is connected to the capture for the shower and they both drain off the same hose. So the capture for the shower is how much water does that hold and, and what is it that it's holding? Where, where does it go? It's a series of piping under the vehicle so you can't even see anything under there and it holds 10 gallons. So what I did is I plumbed a series of piping that will hold 10 gallons of water without seeing anything from under the vehicle visually. You have to lift the vehicle up to see the pipes. And that, if you are winter, using it in the wintertime, will that freeze or do you just want to empty it when you're done with your shower? Well, all you do is pour some RV antifreeze down the shower drain if it's below zero and it just okay. mushy and you don't have to worry about it. So really you don't need a very big gray water tank if it's just taking the sink water yes. uh, and you'd be better off having a bigger freshwater tank. Yeah, um, exactly. Like I say, I have some customers taking both of the bag tanks and making them fresh water and capturing both the sink and the shower under the vehicle in the series of plumbing that we capture and letting them drain out through that hose. If you're out remote camping and you leave the hose on the ground, you, it's open, it's draining constantly, it won't hold any water on the board. And can you have different size um fresh and gray then? I mean, could you have a bigger fresh and a smaller gray if you want to just we have, have sink water go there? I have 13 gallon bag tanks and 23 and a half gallon bag tanks. So the answer is I'd have to go a 23 and a half and two 13s and you'd have, you know, 40, uh, what, 36 gallons uh, of fresh and 13 of gray if we did that, that type of thing. So we can mix and match. Well, we carry two sizes of the uh, bag tank. Great, thank you. Hey Terry, how are you? So uh, I had some questions on the dimensions for your sofa bed setups. And then also uh, my better half is kind of obsessed with a rear sofa bed concept. So is that something that's possible too? Um, the sportsman bed is 76 inches by about 48 inches, 46, 48 inches. We left a little gap when it hits a cabinet. Um, the travelers are 24 inch power bed systems I created that both beds power together as much or little as you want. You can leave the bolster standing on edge and still keep an aisle away and expand the width of the bed if you want, or you can go all the way. And when you do the end table extensions, uh, the bed extenders, it's the size of a queen size bed, just a little shy, but really close to a queen size bed. On the Ford Traveler, like we get to do a 60 inch bed on the driver's side because we've got a little more room in the Ford, the way it works out with front seats and things than we have in a ProMaster, uh, and a 54 inch on the passenger side so we can retain the entrance that we need and get, we actually had to shove your cabinets forward a little bit on the passenger side, Greg, just to make room for your bike and do all the things we did. So that bed's 54, but usually the ladies aren't taller than six foot 
So it works out fine like that. So um, on a ProMaster, they're both 54 inch beds with 18 inch bed extenders. So they're 72 inches by the width of the vehicle. And you just can lay a little crossways and stuff on those and it works out well. So um, that's kind of how it works. We just, we have a 48 inch bed, a 54 inch bed and a 60 inch bed in the Traveler program. When I do the Traveler on that little four by four Sprinter, we do a 48 inch bed on the passenger side with the 18 inch extension and then a 54 on the driver to make that work. And hopefully the wives are short <laughs> because that's about all I can do when we do that. But yeah, so it's just a series of matching different bed systems and widths and lengths to which vehicle it is. Gotcha, thanks. Yeah, so that's what the bed looks like in the Traveler, fully extended with the extensions on the end. You'll see the, what the, when he keeps saying bed extensions, he's talking about those, the two cushions that are there at the very front of the screen that allow you to have basically what is a, a queen size bed. Let me show you a couple other pictures here. That's what your bed looks like when it's made up within that space. So it's a very large bed. And uh, Terry was also talking about um, being able to look at your television, which drops down on those on the Traveler. So that's kind of the whole. Yeah, and then the bolsters lean up when you want to just chase lounge. Right, and I can show you a picture of that too. Give me one second. Is there something there in the middle to support the middle or is that just open there at the end? The, it's all a steel frame constructed bed system that powers to the middle and it is supported by the structure of the, the frame. So there's um, the chase setup that Terry was talking about in an earlier version of the Traveler. So um, Ed, our good friend Ed, wants to know uh, how much room does the porch take up in the back of the van when it's closed? And another question was, um, are the, is the tent and porch removable? Which kind of then leads, is it an option or does everyone come with it? So if you can, how much space does it take up in the back? Um, is it removable? Um, and yeah. basically yeah. Rich can show you to the right of the toilet wall there and you see the space. We leave 10 inches at the floor and about seven inches at the ceiling because usually it's a concave effect at the doors. They don't go straight up, they curve in a little. So there's 10 inches at the floor and what that does, you see the stairway that I have behind the tent that folds up, that's all aluminum folds up flat and stows in that little bit of space between the tent and the porch or the wall and the porch. Um, every, the, there's little chrome poles at the bottom, Rich, that you point at. Yes. See that chrome pole down in the bottom corner? Those are two quick releases. You can pull those two poles and the porch is off. Two seconds. It's gone. It weighs about 60 pounds. You can store, if you have those little moving carts like you do for furniture, those little rolling four-wheel carts with carpet on it, you can set it on it, roll it right in your garage, stand it up against the wall, and it's just out of the way. The tent stays on all the time. We fasten that around the edge but it can tie out and be open and you still have an open concept in the back if you want to do that. Maybe Rich, if you can just kind of pan around and show us the stairs and the... Uh, really uh, nice. Try. There you go. Give the folks a sense of that. Windows all the way around. There's, we have clear windows. The left side, I have the clear window and the, that's a clear window there, but if you pull the clear window down, it's a screen. Uh, so you have privacy, clear windows and screens all the way around. So when you're sitting out there and you just want to, at the end of the day, have a toddy, sit in your chair and see the view, and it's a windy, blustery day, just don't pull the clear window down. If it's a beautiful day and you want ventilation, pull the clear window, you got screens all the way around. So it's your choice. If you want privacy, you know, it's, you can sleep back there. Your grandkids can sleep on the porch with an air mattress. It's just a really, really nice addition to the vehicle. You'll see the hatches in the bottom of the picture Rick ha Rich has there. That's how we bring our electrical in through the floor, and that's how we bring our plumbing in through the floor. That way we don't put those things on the outside of the vehicle. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, that was the best of a one-hour live Q&A with you and Terry over Zoom. We do that monthly, and you'll want to check the uh, schedule on my website, Go Small, Live Large, to uh, see where the next one is coming up. Sure would appreciate a thumb up if you got something out of that. And if you haven't become a subscriber, please consider doing so. We have a goal to have 10,000 subscribers by January, and we're almost at 6,000 right now. So we've got a few more months. We'd love to have you part of the success of this channel. Why does that matter? Well, by you becoming a subscriber, you get notified 
when you press the notification bell that, hey, there's a new video. The videos are about the RV lifestyle, living in a van, the rigs themselves, the places we go, the people we meet. Um, I'm on the road full time and uh, there's a lot to learn and share and that's what we do here. So I would be an honor to have you part of my audience as a subscriber. Doesn't cost you anything. Um, again, going to my website, you'll see that there's events there you'll wanna share. If you trust me with your email address, you can get notifications of the events coming out. We do about one email per month um, with some valuable information there. And there are things on the website that you're not gonna find here on YouTube. So another reason to go check out the website, go small, live large. Speaking of websites, if you're interested in Embassy RV and you wanna see some photographs, some video, um, of their product lines, um, three floor plans, three chassis, pretty unique in the uh, RV space. Go check them out, embassyrv.com. Um, if you want to pose a question to them, there's an online forum. Tell them Scott at Go Small Live Large sent you, and uh, be sure uh, to reach out to them directly. You're welcome to place comments and questions here. Better yet, come to one of the live events, and you can ask Terry for those uh, specifically and in person. <laughs> Uh, so with that, we uh, will thank you again for attending, and I wish you to live happy, live free, live RV. See you later. That's awesome. One thing I forgot to mention, Embassy RV is my paid partner. I am thrilled to be associated with these folks. Even though I live and work for my Winnebago, Travato, Embassy RV is a fantastic partner to me and to their customers and to this audience. So I want to shout out to uh, Terry and the team. Thanks for being my paid partner. And again, if you're curious about them, check them out.